Hello, Sarah Wharton. Thank you for agreeing to do this. Yeah, thanks for asking me some questions. <laughs> um, so to begin with, will you tell us who you are and what you want people to know about you? Yes, my name is Sarah Wharton, and I am an actor, writer, and producer. And I think one of the best things people can know about me is that I grew up all over the world. Um, uh, my dad was a foreign service officer, so I grew up in these very strange communities that were sort of between cultures. Um, and so I feel most happy and comfortable in spaces of transition and in spaces that are not really like defined by rules <laughs> or history even. <laughs> um, so I write a lot of stuff that is very magical, um, magical realism, I feel is where I'm really comfortable as a writer. And uh, I love speaking and thinking in visual metaphors. I think that's the best answer anybody's given to that question yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Could you describe for us your experience of Constellation Incubator? Yes. Um, Constellation Incubator felt like <sighs> walking out into a very vast, wide, deep ocean. Um, I discovered so many amazing interesting things there like there were just so many ideas from all of these amazing creators as we talked about how to really reconstruct how independent film works um and i was so inspired by all of these different points of view of people's experiences having been filmmakers um and the ways they wanted to change the industry or change their experiences with making films. Um, and so I felt like I came away with like this whole collection of new wild exotic creatures. <laughs> and I'm still, I, I think I'm still trying to unpack what all of that was, um, but it felt like a really rich, really important time that we spent together. Um, and I think it has to continue if we want independent film to be sustainable, ultimately. Um, what are the sort of one to three key insights that you that are sticking with you over the months? Um, I was really struck by how I was surrounded by people who just loved stories and loved art and that that part of it made them so happy and it made us all so happy to talk about that together um and we had all had this collective experience of just it being so hard to make them and create them and like work in the industry that usually creates them um so this feeling of energy that came up when we were thinking about like what if it just wasn't so hard <laughs> it was like we were all back in kindergarten again <laughs> um that was really fun and and you know part of the exercises were about physically building new models so when we were starting out lots of people brought legos and toys and so like this really new playful energy that came into it was was super fun and super energizing um so i've been thinking a lot about how to just make the process of making movies not terrible <laughs> which is it's sort of just going back to i think to the origins of why i'm doing this um and i've been trying to focus on what's already working instead of feeling like I have to reinvent a whole new thing and build something from the ground up. Um, I was really struck by people sharing things in their communities that they felt like worked. Um, and the incubator asked us to think about bright spots and that exercise was really impactful. So when I think about bright spots in the independent film industry, I feel like we're not actually so far away from a shift and a change 
um, and focusing on what's working and sort how I can help those things rise to the surface um, has felt has felt like a good direction to put my energy. Can you give us an example of a bright spot? Yeah, um, there is a production company called Pegasus Pictures in Indiana, and I got connected with them because of a short film that I wrote. Um, and I've been so inspired by the way that they have built a very engaged audience and community around their productions and their production company. And <clears throat> I think a part of that is the fact that they're one of the only companies in the area that they're doing this in. The market there just isn't as saturated as it is in a lot of other places. Um, but I think they've also done a lot of really good work around engaging all of these different parts of their community. So making sure that um, they're working with the local high schools and the college that's there to try to invigorate new storytellers and providing jobs training for local people so that they can sort of have a new um, set of skills that's marketable. And they're always asking the community to like come and be a part of their movies. And that means that even though their films have gone to big festivals and have been distributed by big traditional distributors, they can always rely on this community audience that they already have. And when they are talking to investors and stuff, they can say like, listen, we already have the people that we need <laughs> to recoup the cost of this film. And anything else that comes beyond that is like bonus extra, but we know we have the numbers right here. Um, so I think that is such a cool model to learn lessons from. And even though I live in New York City, which is a totally oversaturated market, <laughs> I still feel like there's a significant group of people here who feel left out of all that stuff and who are looking for a community. Um, and that there's, there's a way to connect those people together that serves all of us. I love that. Um, is there any way in which you, anything from the incubator you've already started implementing in your work, even if it's just like an idea shift or, um, or something small or anything? Yeah, I'm going to think about that for a moment because I feel like there's lots of things. <laughs> um, mostly, right now what it is is refusing to um make the work a burden like on myself or on anybody else and just going back to really being specific about what the ultimate long-term goals are with any project um and loosening the reins around needing to like force something to happen just to do something. Um, I've experienced that a lot with COVID with, you know, it's just harder now it's more expensive and there is a certain element of risk um, that has gotten less since we've all been able to get vaccinated, but it just still feels like it really changes the way that production works. Um, and so there have been several projects that I could have like really tried to make happen. I could have made them happen, but it felt kind of like banging my head against a brick wall. Like the reason for why this project had to happen right now just wasn't strong enough to um, make me want to go through like the additional cost and people having to wear masks and not really be able to collaborate in the space together. And all of this additional stuff. So uh, letting the sort of grind culture of this go has, has been a thing that I've been trying to practice. And what that has led me to is actually to spend a lot more time in development. Mm -hmm. And I think that that has been great. <laughs> I mean, it's been great as an artist, just on a soul level, 
but I think it's making the work better too. And so when we actually get to do the thing, it's going to be better and easier and more fun, I hope. I was having this conversation actually with Christian Colson yesterday, and we were saying about how, like, there's, there's so little emphasis on, on script development at the moment in the film culture, and that it's always just sort of like, how fast can you get it into production? which Netflix and, and them are definitely replicating. Like it's, it's like, okay, it's good enough. But then right. there's like a deepening to the work that isn't happening in that way. I've seen that a lot with um, like first debut features or debut series. Uh, even if the, the filmmakers themselves have had experience before, but it's like, it's like a new series or something. Um, and like the first film or the first season feels so good and so strong. And you can tell that like they were working for so long to make it exquisite. And then everyone gets excited about it and all this money gets involved and they scramble to do it again. And the second one just isn't as good because there wasn't any time <laughs> to make it good. And it's so disappointing. I mean, I can't blame them, but it does feel like you can just sort of tell that it was a, a mad rush to make it happen. Yeah, we, so we're, we just watched the new season of Ozarks mm -hmm. and I had watched the, the prior seasons and Steven hadn't, but he joined me for this one. He's like, this show is like amazing. And I was like, this season is amazing. The rest of the show has been very touch and go, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And I was like, it's so weird. And he's like, well, didn't they have two years off before this <laughs> season? And I was like, oh, they did. Yeah. Yeah, we couldn't shoot. We had to make it better. It's a great thing. <laughs> um, how do you think about the future of indie film? Like, what's your what's your dream for it? Um, my dream is that all of the people who want to do it can and have a way to do it sustainably. Um, for myself, I'm really interested in, in like digging much deeper into my community here um, because I have this sort of, it's, it's a very elemental notion. <laughs> it's, I haven't been very discerning about it yet, but I have this notion that by just like really strengthening whatever connections I have already in the community that I have here, even though it's small, that that has a, a larger impact than trying to sort of like super spread myself and my work um, over, across connections that are thinner. And so, so much of what I'm doing right now, again, in sort of development is thinking about what can I do to strengthen the connections that exist. Um, and, and so for me, that my vision of my career feels now very connected to not just making films, but interacting with people in the process of making them. Um, so I think education is a part of that. I think that um, community action is a part of that. And I'm really curious to, to continue to explore like what role art and independent art can really play in society, particularly right now. I mean, I know we all use it to escape and to heal and to understand ourselves better, um, but in terms of a tool to form community in places where community feels fragile. Uh, that feels like a really exciting idea to me. I love all of that. Um, anything else you wanna say? You want people to know about Constellation Incubator or what you learned there? Um, Constellation Incubator felt like really uh, like it was part of a huge global conversation that was going on throughout so many industries about 
how we can just live our lives more sustainably and in less pain. <laughs> um, I think the pandemic really, I mean, it put so much stress on so many people in so many different ways and also really highlighted the ways that we were dysfunctional. Um, and so I felt like we were examining the independent film industry, but it was being replicated in all of these different places. So I feel very honored to have been able to spend time just thinking about that and really digging into it. Um, and I'm excited for everybody else who's doing something like that in their own industries um, because it does feel catalytic and it feels like we're all ready for a change. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just hope that we all keep having these kinds of conversations with each other across industries. Yeah. I, one of the interviews I did earlier this week um, with Jill, she, she was pointing out all these examples of ideas that we had in the Constellation Incubator that have since come true, <laughs> presumably not because of the Constellation Incubator. <laughs> <laughs> just that, like, that, that we sort of hit this like point where these ideas had to emerge like um Lauren Sawa sent around that um article about how now the BFI just uh is enforcing having a wellness coordinator on sets which was like yeah. a central idea and and um Jill was saying that within uh IATSE there's now this paid mentorship program which was a feature of one of the other ones so I agree with you it's, it's like there's like a heaving happening of which this was part. Yeah, definitely. Exciting. Uh, where can people find you and support your work? Um, I am all over the internet. You can visit my website, adventurekidproductions.com, or you can find me on Instagram at Sarah Amory, um, Facebook, I'm Sarah Wharton. And if you follow me there, I post about my work all the time. So that's where you can find it. Oh, and my film American Insurrection just premiered on Showtime, so you can watch it there. So exciting. Watch the film. It's so good. Thanks. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.